Hey guys, welcome to our Tech Sports Series here at Envo. My name is Amir and today we're going to unbox and put together our Envo D35. So let's get into it. Now that we got our box all opened up, we're going to remove our battery box and we're going to remove our accessories box and we're going to set those aside and we're going to grab our manual and please make sure you thoroughly read this. Okay, so now we're going to pull the bike out of the box. We'll just lift it up and pull the bike out and get that box out of our way. Okay, so now that we got the bike pulled out of the box, we're just going to remove the wheel. We're going to cut the zip ties and we're going to remove the wheel and set that aside. And we're going to start kind of unpacking the bike. Okay, so now we're just going to put the front wheel on the bike so that it becomes more stable and we can handle the handlebar installation a little bit easier. So we're going to grab our front wheel and we're just going to prepare it. So we'll be removing these black protective covers off the wheel and we'll clip the front fender off and set that aside. I'll set that aside somewhere else. And now we just want to remove this plastic cover off the front wheel. Remove the brake block and set that aside for now. Get our front wheel. And just be careful in this position. Line the rotor up. Line the dropouts up and just slide the front wheel in. Put the kickstand down and let the bike rest. Okay, so now that we got the front wheel installed, we're gonna carry on with removing the packaging and removing the handlebar. So we'll cut this zip tie over here. I'm gonna remove this protective cover of the battery. And we'll also remove the foam on the handlebar. Lay that down gently. And now we want to install the handlebar, so we're going to get our four mil Allen key and we're going to unscrew these four bolts on the stem here. So we got the stem cover removed and we're just going to grab our handlebar and make sure that it's in the correct orientation so that our controls are on the left side and our bell is on the right side. Now we're just going to line it up. We're not going to worry about the positioning too much for now. We just want to get the stem cover plate on and we'll just begin threading these bolts in. So now that we got the handlebar stem kind of slightly tightened up, we want to be making sure that the gap between the clamp here and on the bottom is equal as we're tightening. So now we want to adjust the handlebar into the correct position in the stem. So we want to make sure that these lines here are equally centered. So we'll just kind of wiggle it around. Okay, so now we want to adjust the handlebar in a position that's correct for you and for your riding style. So for me, I'm going to have it kind of positioned with the sweep up and a little bit back and my brakes pointed down in a straight line from where I'd be coming. So this seems pretty good for me. Now that that's all right, I'm going to go ahead and fully tighten up these four mil bolts, making sure that the gaps stay even on the top and the bottom. And we're going to tighten in an X pattern. So top right, then bottom left, then top left, and then bottom right. Now you want to make these pretty tight, about six to eight newton meters. 
Okay, so for the SD, we're gonna remove this top cover that's just holding our fork in place so that it doesn't fall out during shipping. So we don't actually need any of this and we can just set that aside. Okay, so now we're gonna grab our handlebar and we're gonna push this up with our thumb and open the clamp up. And that'll give us access to this bolt that's in here, if you can see that. Now we'll line this up with the headset and we'll just start tightening that up, giving it a little bit of a wiggle as we go, making sure that it sits So we're almost there, still got some play. Checking for play, that should be all good. Now we're gonna check these grooves here and we're gonna put, position them in the center where we can't see them. We're gonna position the handlebar in the way that we like, in the height that we like and we're going to close the clamp. Okay, so now we're going to line the handlebar up with the front wheel. So we'll just position that accordingly. Now we're going to tighten these bolts here on the side. Go evenly on the left and the right together. We want to make sure this is pretty tight. And that's how to install your Envo ST handlebar. Okay, so inside of the two boxes, you're gonna find your battery and your battery charger, the 36 volt charger. You're gonna find your pedals, your fender clamps, bolts and screws, and your front wheel through axle. Okay, so now we're gonna install the QR axle on the front wheel. So we're just gonna unscrew this one's part. Remember to keep the screw on both sides. So we want to get the axle, put it down on the left side, slide that in through the hole, and spring first. Then we're just going to start tightening up this bolt. Okay, so now for this situation, we're going to want to have the bike be tall and straight. So that allows the wheel to go in nice and straight. So we're just going to tighten up this bolt here, making sure that our clamp is nice and secure. Okay, so now we're going to install our fender and our fender clamps alongside with our headlight. So we'll just cut this zip tie first. That's holding our battery keys and headlight on in place. Throw that away. Install the key into the battery key lock. Get that out of the way. Now we can install the headlight. Okay, so we're gonna grab our headlight and fender bolt, which is the five mil bolt. Put the washer through the headlight, through the fender, and thread that into place. Now that that's threaded, we're gonna get our five mil Allen key and start tightening that up. Now, as we get to the end of the tightening, we want to make sure that the fender is in its highest position so we don't get any sort of tire rub. Okay, now that that headlight and the top of the fender is secured, we're going to go ahead and secure the fender stays using the fender clamps and our four mil Allen key. Okay, so we're gonna get these clamps and we're just gonna position them in place and give it a little squeeze. We'll put our first bolt in through the fender, stay through the other hole, position our nut, grab our four mil Allen key and just start tightening that up. Now that we've gotten a 
in there and tighten up, we're going to grab our eight millimeter wrench and begin to secure the fender stay bolts. Now we're going to move on to the other side and repeat the same process, but also at the same time making sure that both the clamps are at the same level. So now that we got the fender all clamped up and secured, we're just going to make sure we're not getting any sort of rub with the tire in the fender. So we're just going to check that by lifting the tire a little bit off the floor and giving it a little spin. We are getting some brake rub and we can adjust that later, but fenders are all good. Okay, so now we're going to install our pedals. We're just going to simply apply a little bit of grease to the threads and we're going to thread them into the cranks and we'll finish the tightening up process with a 15 millimeter wrench. And we just want to spread the grease to both of the threads. And for installation, we want to note the left and right on the top of the threads here. Okay, so now for the installation, we're going to grab our left pedal and we're going to line the threads up with the crank. And we're just going to simply begin pedaling backwards until the threads catch. And we're just going to keep tightening in until we can't tighten anymore. Now we'll grab our 15 millimeter wrench and give it that last little bit of tightening and we'll repeat that same procedure on the right side. Okay, so now that we got the pedals installed, we're gonna secure our seat post and we're gonna secure our handlebar. So we'll start that off by opening up the clamp and tightening up this knob here until our clamp feels quite firm. That should be pretty good. Now we're gonna head to our handlebar and we're gonna check for any looseness in the grips by giving them a twist. We're gonna check our bell for any looseness, our controls, our throttle, our brake levers, and our shifter, and our display. We're also gonna check our brake levers for pressure, which is good. So all we'll need to tighten is basically our bell and our display for this. So we're gonna check our grips we're going to tighten that with a three mil Allen key. Now we're going to check our brake levers. So these are pretty secure. We can feel that our throttle is pretty secure, but if you need to, you can use your three mil to tighten that up. And we can tighten up our controls with a 2.5 mil. Now we're going to move over to our display and we got some bolts three mil bolts here. We're going to grab our three mil wrench and just give those a little bit of a tighten and put that back into position. Now we can check our shifter, which is pretty tight and we will use our five mil for the shifter. Five mil for the shifter. We're going to use the Phillips for the bell. So now that we got our cockpit controls all secured and our seat post secured, we're just going to double check that our fork and our stem has no play in it and these bolts are secured. So we're just going to grab a hold of our front brake, rock it back and forth, and this feels pretty secure. Okay, so for any adjustments that you want to make to the handlebar height, you can do that with this 5mm bolt here on the side and you just loosen that up and that should allow you to freely move the stem up and down to whatever height you prefer. Now remember that wherever you adjust the stem, you're gonna to have to also adjust the handlebar itself, so keep that in mind. So I like this position, and I'm gonna tighten that up. Make sure that is very secure. Cool. Okay, so now we're going to install the battery into the bike. We're going to flip the switch on the underside of the battery to the on position, and we're going to double check that the LEDs turn on. So now we're going to insert the battery into the pins. We're going to make sure that the pins on the battery are clear, and the pins are on the mount are clear as well. We're going to line the pins up. We're going to push into the butt of the battery, and then give the top of the battery a nice press, and then we're going to double check that the battery is locked in place. 
Okay, so now we got our power button here in the center and we can cycle through our PAS modes using the plus and minus buttons. If we go into the zero, the bike will not respond to any power or PAS and we can go all the way up to five levels of pedal assist. Remember that throttle will always be at 100% no matter where you are, except zero. So if you press the plus button, that will turn on your headlight and your tail light and you can repeat the same process holding it and that will turn off the lights. If you press and hold the down button, that should put your bike into walk mode so that if you're in any walking situations like going up a hill or something like that, the bike can assist you in that situation. Okay, so now that we got the system all booted up, we're gonna check the throttle, we're gonna check our brake cutoff signals and we're gonna check the PIS. So we're gonna lean the bike over onto the kickstand and give the throttle a little push. Nice, throttle's working. We're gonna check our brake cutoff signals. So front brake, no signal, rear brake, no signal. We're also gonna check our PAS. So that's functioning smoothly. And while we're here, we're gonna check all our gears. So go through all the gears, making sure they're all clicking properly. Nice. Okay, so our front suspension fork has two adjustments that you can make. It has a lockout mechanism, so right now it's in the open position. And if I give it a push, it'll respond. But now if I put it in the locking position, it's firm. So we can adjust that back and forth. And now we have a preload adjustment here. So the more preload you add, the firmer the suspension will get. And the less preload you add, the softer the suspension will get. And that's it for the bike build. Please make sure you thoroughly read the manual and you double check that all the bolts and nuts on the bike are secure. For any extra maintenance tips, please check out our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. If you have any extra support questions, check out the link in the description below and that'll guide you to our Envo Help Center. Thanks for watching guys and I hope you had a nice day.